let's play this. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> did you delete this? Because if no, you delete I did this, not delete right. it. Yeah, you like that? Mm, yes. <laughs> okay, so we're I like started. peanut butter. I like peanut butter. Peanut peanut butter. I like peanut butter. I like peanut butter. I like peanut butter. Peanut peanut butter. I like peanut butter. You're listening to the Creek Geeks podcast. Thank you very much for tuning in. This is the Creep Geeks Podcast. This is episode number 90. Sheep Geek Podcast becomes Creep Geeks Podcast and miscellaneous crap. That's right. All right, and we're back. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have, such a, yeah. I have a headache, so there you go. That's enough that's loud in my head. So anyway, thank you very much for tuning into the Creep Geeks podcast. This is episode number 90. Can you guys see that fly? If you're watching live right now <laughs> as we do the live stream podcast on Sundays, there is a fly who is trying its damnedest to die today. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not one to go out there and just randomly start killing stuff unless I need to, but this thing is going to, <laughs> it's going, I'm going to get it. It's like, hey, Mr. I want to be a part of the show. I can't Miyagi. I don't have any chopsticks. You, <laughs> don't go smacking the equipment. That's how we get in, into problems. So anyway, this is our episode number 90, and this is the Creep Geeks podcast becomes the, or, I'm sorry, Creep, Cheap Geek podcast becomes the Creep Geeks podcast. Yeah. And miscellaneous crap. <laughs> So it is what it is. So we spent a long, hard weekend going through and doing a change. And the change is simply this. We have changed the name of the podcast and the outlook of the podcast and the type of podcast that it is. Theme. To be better suited to what it really is. Yeah. In other words, it was what it was, but now it is what it is. So this is where we start again. And we're not going to start over again because after doing some hard due diligence. Yeah. And some real work, I figured out how to change the podcast without actually having to undo everything that we did. Yeah. To get to this point. So that's where we're at. Does that make any sense at all? Probably, probably doesn't. No, because most of the listeners probably aren't aware of the back end work. I th um, well, I, they probably don't care. Yeah. But, I mean, we, we don't want to lose any listeners, but this migration will hopefully help us gain more listeners. Yes. So get off. we appreciate it. This stupid Would bug, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know earlier when we made our announcement last weekend, we kind of had a, a couple of loyal fans freaking out. Yeah. That's okay. Calm down. And by a couple, mean one. No, no there's like two. There's okay, two. Only two. So everything's fine. Spoons, if you can hear us, everything's okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> but the goal of this is uh, two things. We wanted a name that uh, better envelops or better describes what we talk about on this podcast. Yes. Also, while we appreciate the immense growth we've actually had over the past few months, 
um, a lot of that hasn't been necessarily from our name. It's been from the amazing listeners that we have gotten uh, doing a lot of word of mouth and some um, very tired and tried promotion through our, our, our own efforts. Yes. It would be easier to promote the theme and what we want to bring to you guys through the name. And that's about it. Yes. Uh, and as far as that name, the cheap, the Creep Geeks podcast is essentially the same thing. It's going to be an offbeat news podcast where we explore the strange, the stupid, paranormal, and tech topics circulating the web. So. Yes. Yes. And if you do want to call the show, you can call and leave us a message. That phone number is still the same. It's 575-208-4025. And we do have a new URL. I'll go ahead and throw that into the comment thread right now. Done. Oh, all right. <laughs> so. Bam, look at that. Okay, somebody beat me to the punch. That beat cool. me. Mm-hmm. I beat you to the punch. Yes. How do we ban cheap kick? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and turn her mic off. <laughs> So anyway, uh, yeah, we, what we did was we kind of went through and took a look at it, and it didn't make sense. I mean, Cheap Geek it made sense for a while, but really the kind of stuff that we'd like to do, it falls more. It, the, in other words, the name didn't really match. The carpet didn't match the drapes <laughs> with this whole thing. So at least now the name does, and it, it, it makes more sense. And we've already got more followers on Instagram than we, we've got in the past couple of days. So it just seems like it's going to work. So I went ahead and changed the logo. A um, couple different logos going on. This one was created for us, which is very cool. That yes. one's probably going to be a T-shirt. It's going to come in two flavors. The burgundy that it is right there and purple if you're a female. <laughs> purple? Yeah. Is that a new shampoo? Yeah, no, that's how you say purple when you want to charge more. But I don't know. So <laughs> we're going through, we kind of took a look at it. It made more sense. So the problem that I was having was is that you know, we're on, on every, anywhere you can listen to a podcast, you can find the Cheap Geek Podcast. Yeah. iTunes, Google Play, I mean, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, everywhere. And the fear was is that changing the podcast, you typically have to change your RSS feed. And this is some boring tech stuff, but it's necessary. Anyway, by changing the RSS feed, you lose all your links. You lose all the, the places you feed your RSS feed to, and thereby breaks everything. Yeah. And so effectively, you'd be creating a podcast all over again from scratch. And I didn't want to do that. So, <laughs> And just in case you were wondering, RSS stands for really simple syndication. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Some, some learning for you. Let you think about that real quick. <laughs> So, after spending some time and taking a look at it, and spending all day Saturday, which is yesterday, or if you're listening tomorrow, it was a couple days ago, kind of got it figured out. So, Creep Geeks has taken the place of Cheap Geek, and it's everywhere. Yeah. So, we haven't lost anything. So, Google Play Music, it's there. Um, iTunes, there. Mm -hmm. iHeartRadio, there. Stitcher, there. Blueberry, there. Spotify. Spotify, there. Yeah. It's basically all the same places that it was before. With That's one cool. new addition. Yeah. Um, there is a new YouTube channel for Creep Geeks. Okay. Yeah. So that way, because the way we used to do it was we would record this podcast and then upload the podcast to YouTube along with the audio version of it for people who like to listen to the audio version. Yeah. Um, so that's changed. It's actually going to go to Creep Geeks and be its own animal there. So if you like to watch the Cheap Geek podcast on YouTube, you can now watch the Creep Geeks podcast on YouTube. It's just a matter of clicking the link and we'll put the link in there yeah. um, sooner than later. So if you have subscribed to us on YouTube, uh, do it again. Yeah, because it's like starting a new channel. So when you do that all over again, it winds up being where you have to um, start over. And I can't change the name of the YouTube channel to Creep Geeks until I get to 100 subscribers. So, you know, kind of is what it is. I mean, that's just how it is with YouTube in general. Man, I don't have a problem with, with uh, uh, Cheap Geek because, I mean, I've got over 25,000 subscribers and uh, eight and a half million views. Oh, man. And see, that's the problem. Yeah. Um, but I can find it. I'll put a link, so it's okay. not a big deal. So, <laughs> it is what it is. So by going through and spending a lot of time Saturday and really working at it, this is what we came up with. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think? Leave a comment. Let us know. If you're watching the live stream, you have comments right there. Hmm. 
tell us what do you think what do you think of the name what do you think of the logo what do you think of the uh uh the goal do you understand the goal we're here for your questions man <laughs> oh it locked up on me come on why so that's cool I can't see anything. We right currently now. have one subscriber. Ooh. Yeah. Who, who is it? <laughs> I can't tell. You can't see it. I know. Do, 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 do. Yes. My uh, sister-in-law's got jokes. <laughs> Ban her immediately. No. <laughs> oh, is it is it a funny joke? Like funny how? Oh well, um, she was joking about the color selection for the future T-shirts, and that basically a burgundy is for girls at least once a month. That's gross. <laughs> Oh, that's that is, gr- that is in- that's gross. So my parents actually went out and visited my uh, my my little brother and and his wife, and yes. uh, they were pointing out um, dark, low flying, silent aircraft with no position lights hmm. above the base. Nice. Yeah, you should tell us more about that. Maybe we can talk about it in a future episode. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. What? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> There you go. Anyway, I found a leak. Okay, cool. So if you want to, want to do it. Uh, so, Mo, that's a great question. He asked, am I supposed to be watching this on YouTube? Uh, with the fact that... like, Watch wherever you want, brother. Yeah, well, with the fact, like he pointed out, um, him and Jamie are watching it on two different devices. Yeah. And Jamie's is more up to speed, and his is lagging. That's hmm. another reason that we're kind of like, and you know, um, earlier uh, Jay was uh, saying his volume's weird. It's another reason we're not sure if we're going to stay on Facebook with these live videos or if we're going to migrate over to YouTube. We do yeah. post to YouTube right now, though, so that you can watch at your convenience in case you can't tune into a live show every Sunday night. So Yeah, I'm thinking we're going to switch to YouTube. Yeah. So all y'all who are afraid of the YouTubes are going to going to need to not be afraid of the YouTubes. Yes. Yeah. So. Actually, uh, someone asked, has the merch shop moved to Creep Geeks yet? Who asked that? Where are you seeing this? From? I'm not seeing any of this. Either. Christian Robertson. Ah. Yeah. I that is a great we we slapped all of this together and by we I mean he busted his butt all weekend so we still need to yeah no it's not there yet it will organize be. it yeah it's gonna be though so <laughs> yeah we're gonna put all that stuff in there so when it comes down to it anything we create for the uh, creep geeks podcast and you know it's like and it has a whole 14 slants is gonna be there Ooh. yes yeah Maybe. So, a very good question. Maybe even some cool patches. Yeah. Yeah. Like Maybe some one. patches. <laughs> they, I don't think they can see it. On yours? Oh, okay. No. Oh, yeah. I don't think they can. Yeah. So. Oh, well, they can see my patch. So. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay. So, we should move into some news. All right. So, okay. Here goes. And we're going to start again. And, uh, yeah, I, uh, I feel like I'm off my game. Really? Why? Yeah. Because I have a headache, man. I had a headache yeah. all day. It hasn't been going very well for me. Okay. Okay, so here's an interesting random inter- interesting random factoid. Did you know um, that you are not allowed to uh, keep eagle feathers? No, I didn't. Yes, well, you can't. Oh, I can't. That, that's the end of that fact. Right there. <laughs> Would you stop? <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> okay, so <coughs> for over, uh, well, uh, for about 80 years now, it is illegal for anyone who is non-Native American to possess, possess bald eagle parts, including feathers. Yeah. This law has been on the books for, you know, about 80 years, but most Americans didn't know about it. So when Governor Andrew Cuomo... Rec- Cuomo. Cuomo. I can't say anything, uh, okay? Cuomo. 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 Uh, last hey, you remember week- that song by <laughs> Sticks? Like, no. It sounded like Mr. Roboto. Cuomo. Uh, where, you know. uh, anyway, okay. So about, what, last week, uh, the governor was recounting a treasured memory <laughs> yeah. of the time his family retrieved an eagle feather from Saranac Lake and kept it as one of the beautiful birds swooped near his canoe. 
In telling his story, the, why do they point that out? The New York Democrat unknowingly confessed to a crime. What the heck? Oh, and, uh, you know, mentioning that this governor was a lawyer and former federal official. <laughs> yeah. So basically, it's illegal, and it's been illegal for a long time. I knew this. I didn't. Well, a lot, yeah. evidently a lot of people don't. And he was telling this wonderful story about how he broke the law. <laughs> I just thought it was pretty funny. Yep. You think you'd know better, right? He, yeah. He's a lawyer and a former federal former federal official. Oh, wow. Yeah. A hundred thousand dollar fine or yeah. imprisonment for one year or both for first offense. Yeah. That's just for the first offense. So if you get caught doing it again, it, it's even worse. But only permitted members of federally recognized American Indian tribes can possess eagle feathers, which are used in ceremonies and rituals. Yes. I don't know. That seems a little redundant. Um, but giving up the feather would undoubtedly be a disappointment for him, who had joy on his face as he told an audience at Hotel Saranac on Tuesday how much he had enjoyed visiting the region over the years. <laughs> uh, that's. I had a great time plundering your natural resources. <laughs> <laughs> it was fantastic. But I didn't. Yeah, he was like, in one, <laughs> he talked about an eagle that swooped in front of the canoe. Yeah. And a feather fell out. And we picked up that feather, <laughs> and I have it on my fireplace to this very day. So it wasn't until 2007 that eagles were removed from the list of threatened and endangered species because yeah. in about 1963, fewer than 500 nesting pairs remained, according to a federal agency. The EPA banned DDT in 1972, which was a move that helped start the recovery of bald eagles. But I guess through all legislation and stuff like that, um, only natives, na native peoples were allowed to still utilize birds, mm. these birds for what, you know, their culture dictated. Yeah, ceremonies and... Yeah. So apparently, um, if you uh, are sightseeing or doing any little travels and you come across an eagle feather and uh, you're a cracker, don't touch it. <laughs> That's, I don't know. Why would you even say that? That's not even remotely funny. <sighs> Anyways, but, what? I don't. I don't get that. It's if you're white, apparently you're not allowed to take a eagle. Well, feather. if you're anything other than Native American, you're not allowed to. So, yeah. um, I guess that doesn't make sense. <sighs> okay. Um, not cool, man. Oh, I'm sorry. It's it's okay. not. It's okay. like not cool. Good job. Uh huh. Let me let you think about what you just said. Huh. So, um, for Mo and Jamie, uh, a link was posted a little further up. So, did you guys click on that link? For what? Uh, they're trying to search for the new YouTube channel. So, yeah. Here, I'll post it again. Alright, there we go. So yeah, that was the uh, interesting factoid for today. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right. What? Let's just throw this episode in the trash. Fine. Here we go. <laughs> okay, so anyway, uh, let's go back to the podcast and let's think about something here what? for a second. All right. Okay. So we decided to go through and talk more about paranormal stuff and do all that kind of stuff that we, we basically have been doing for the past like 60 plus episodes. Mm-hmm. And one of the things we've talked about in the past has been, you know, some of the, the basic stuff that we everybody seems to know about, like Bermuda Triangle, um, you know, cryptids and stuff like that. Well, one of the things I've been paying attention to, especially being as I was in the Navy and floated around that area for a while, was the Bermuda Triangle, right? Yeah. They were sometimes called the Devil's Triangle. And a lot of weird stuff happens there, and it's it's, it's pretty famous, but... Uh, not to go into the Bermuda Triangle in great and agonizing detail because it seems like uh, there's enough documentaries and mockumentaries and, and shows that you can watch on it, but there's some scientists that think they actually have the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle solved. Okay. And the Bermuda Triangle has been known to take planes and ships and aircraft and, and all sorts of other stuff, and they just they go into the Bermuda Triangle and you just don't come back. Oh. Yeah. 
and it's a pretty big area. It, it makes a triangle from like Florida to Bermuda to somewhere else. It makes this big triangle, and it's not a big deal, right? Yeah. <clears throat> There's been all sorts of theories about this. Everything from aliens to getting lost and winding up in another dimension, Atlantis. That's where Atlantis was, and Atlantis went down. You know. Mm-hmm. And that's what causes all these weird magnetic anomalies and strange problems and stuff like that. Big methane gas bubbles that can kind of, you know, come up from the bottom. And when they pop, it basically displaces the ocean. And if you're a ship up there, it'll you can sink, right? Crack the ship. Yeah. So, according to Britain's Channel 5, they have this you know, Bermuda Triangle Enigma. These scientists believe that the conditions are just right to cause giant waves. Okay. And these giant waves can show up out of nowhere, right? And they yeah. can be, you know, upwards of 100 feet tall, take out whatever's there, and then they go away. Okay. So there'd be no evidence. Mm-hmm. Right? So they say when you have, like, storms to the south and the north, and when they come together with all the other conditions that have to happen, it makes these massive rogue waves, and these rogue waves can take you out, and then, you know, they just, what, they show up, they do their deal, and then they go away. Rogue waves. Okay. That's what they think huh. is causing, you know, some of the problems the Bermuda Triangle has had in the past, right? Some of these can be 100 feet tall. It's like a 100 foot tall tsunami that could be triggered by an earthquake, right? Yeah. That's like the tallest one that they've seen. Not the rogue wave, but this was in Alaska's uh, Lujia Bay in 1958. It's a 100 foot tall tsunami wave. So, if the storms and the way it all works together in the Bermuda Triangle can create these 100-foot rogue waves, think about that, man. You're not going to survive that, especially if you're like a little boat. Not good. So, what they did was they got together, the scientists, and they made an, an indoor simulator. They also made a, a model of the USS Cyclops, which is a ship that disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle in 1918, had 306 people on board. It was swamped by a big wave and sank, and then um, they figured out later on that a design flaw would make this Cyclops ex- exceptionally susceptible to rogue waves, right? Mm-hmm. Because she had a flat bottom, and so she rolled over pretty easily, is what they're saying. It's like, you know, one day she rolled like 50 degrees one way, and then in high winds, they rolled 40 degrees the other way. That's crazy, man. That's a, that's a really big roll in a ship that size. So, there were other ships, um, like the Cyclops, it's the Proteus and Nearest, that were kind of, sort of kind of the same construction. They were lost, too. But what they figured out was, for the ship, that small ship, right, the Cyclops, mm-hmm. it would only take a rogue wave of 50 feet to sink it. This thing was, like, you know, 300 feet long, this ship. Yeah. Which is on par with the you know, destroyer. Destroyer is like 500 feet, so aircraft carrier is even way bigger than that. So, I mean, if you take a 100-foot rogue wave and it hits you, broadsides you, or if your steerage is wrong, you're in the wrong position, you're going to roll over, you're going to go away. But what I don't understand is, is like, okay, so you can have a 100-foot tall rogue wave that can take out a ship, right? What about planes? What, they haven't addressed that, how that would affect a plane. Unless you run into it, right? Oh, well, I mean, for these rogue waves and rogue... I don't know, rogue waves and stuff like that, usually there's a storm associated with them. So yeah, I would a, associate a storm with bad visibility and other things, so that could account for the planes. But, I mean, how can it take it out? You know what I mean? I, I don't I don't think it's necessarily what they're saying. Like, we've solved it. We've solved the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle. I, I don't think so. Hmm. Because, you know, whenever you have a hard time explaining things like that and, and it becomes where it's like there's more than one explanation. Yeah. I, I look at it like this, and there's probably more than one reason. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I can see rogue waves taking out ships. Sure. You know, something else could be taking out planes. It could be a combination of those things. I don't, I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't think it's ever just one one solid reason as to what causes what. It's got to be like a, a factor. There's like a bunch of different things going on. I think it's a prime area for weird storms and weird fluctuations. And yeah. I think that's what's contributing to but it. But I don't think they got it figured out. But they say they did. And I'm like, well, let me read this. And I'm like, ooh, that makes sense. That's interesting. I'm like, well, oh, wait a minute. Planes fly higher than that. So what do you think about that? Okay. Nice. So there you go. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Nothing. Is there comments? No, no comments. So. Uh, 
Nobody's waving at me. Yes. Hey, Scott. I waved back. So we have some uh, people listening in the audience today. And if you want to listen to the cheap, I'm sorry, Creep Geeks podcast, you can do that because every Sunday we do the live stream. So whether it be on YouTube or Facebooks, yeah, you're more than welcome to uh, join in. Hmm. Yeah, I need to find some music. It's just weird because I can hear myself really good in my head. I can't. Because dude couldn't hear himself. <laughs> it's like it's kind of freaking me out. So. Uh, okay. That's better. Very nice. Hey, what do you guys think about our uh, I Want to Believe poster we got back there? Look how old it is. <laughs> it's ancient. It's like, ooh, it's from the past. It's, no, it's from not. a place called Wish. <laughs> it was free plus shippings. What was the shipping on that? It was a lot. Are you kidding? Yeah, it's like five bucks. What? <laughs> Shows us uh, uh. what we know. But anyway, the, the Bumir Triangle thing is, is something that's always been fascinating, you know? And then I joined the Navy and started sailing through it. I'm like, okay, it's not that, you know. See, because when you when you were little, right? Things that could kill you instantly, according to TV. Scorpion, yeah, you're dead. You got bit by a scorpion, gone right now, right? Okay. Black Widow, dead, right? If you see a lion and he attacks you, dead. You know, all this stuff would kill you right away, right? Yeah. Other things, Bermuda Triangle, don't go in there, you'll die, right? Okay. And as you get older, you realize that's not always the case. So, having sailed through the Bermuda Triangle many, many times, my dad included, and your brother as well. Hey, man. We made it, and my brother. Yeah. So we've gone gone in that area because it's just a, it's just a place, you know. It's not like if you go into it, you're gonna die. But, you know, that's what the people that went in there and died said, though. You know, hey, it's cool. Don't worry about it. Not a big deal. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's not like you're gonna encounter like humanoids or anything. Hello. What? This is where you talk. Uh, humanoids. Okay. I threw that to you. <laughs> The humanoid link. We don't have a script. Yes, we or do. We have, a, we have a note. So this is completely organic. Yeah. Okay. So paranormal so. and weird under the subsection, paranormal and weird. Uh-huh. After the Bermuda Triangle waves, <laughs> right, comes point number two. Which, we're talking about Texas humanoids. Which is actually interesting because it's... Humanoids. Say that with me. <laughs> you get mad at me because I don't talk on cue, and then you don't shut <laughs> well, up. I threw it to you. I'm like, here you go. And then you're like, what? Who is this? Okay. So. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Dirk. <laughs> Anyways, weird encounters with mysterious humanoids in Texas. And this is kind of creepy because I actually have a friend and her family right now. They're traveling through Texas. Are they humanoids? No, they are not. They are very charming people. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyways. Um, Texas, that's kind of kind of the Southwest, so uh, accounts of humanoids, why not? Uh, there have been a lot of strange cases of creatures and entities out there scattered all across the world. Often these accounts have no clear origin or logical answer to explain what people are seeing, and they seem doomed to flutter about in the periphery of the odd. Um, they mention how these re- reports of humanoids in nature, which served to defy all attempts to truly classify them, the U.S. state of Texas has had more than its share of accounts of b- bizarre humanoid creatures. Yes. Um, one of the first reports uh, in this this article, which we got off of uh, uh, MU, um, paranormal researcher Albert S. Rosales wrote a series of books called Humanoid Encounters which focused on alleged sightings of various strange entities corresponding to certain years Uh, basically this was 1970 to 74 Um, an an odd report from the town of Amarillo which supposedly took place in 1970 in the account witnesses claim that he moved into a Oh, a witness claimed that he moved into a ranch with his family surrounded by a desolate landscape of sand dunes and very little vegetation. For the first few days at their new home, nothing particularly strange happened, but it took a deep right turn into Bizarreville rather quickly. It started when the grandmother allegedly discovered a den of wolf cubs near the house. But when she brought the grandfather there to next day to show him her discovery, it was found the adult wolves were dead and the cubs were nowhere to be seen. That kind of sounds like a skinwalker to me. Mm. Um, when the wolf carcasses were examined, it seemed as if they had been torn apart by something very large with formidable claws, and this understandably made them a bit wary as to what was roaming around out there in the wilds, particularly close to their property. 
Um, the next evening, the grandfather had a nightmare in which he had a premonition of intense foreboding and a warning in his head to move um, move away immediately. When he awoke in a cold sweat, he went out to the outhouse, and as he did, he claimed to have seen a hulking humanoid figure with glowing red eyes, which seems to be surveying the house from the dark. Interestingly, the witness's great-grandmother also had a premonition that night, and he would say of what happened next. Early in that night, my great-grandmother had a terrible feeling and sent my granduncle Ray with his family to check on his brother. Ray was almost to the house when the car ran out of water. I don't... That's a weird thing. Okay. He remembered there was a well nearby and went to get some water. He yeah, didn't, overheat. Oh, okay. He didn't get too far when the thing with red eyes came in front of him. He ran back to the car and told his family to run to his brother's house. He grabbed a shotgun and bowie knife so he could buy his family time to get away. Ray made sure the car was between him and the creature. The creature charged him quickly. He shot the creature nearly point blank range several times with no effect. He tried to stab it but almost got slashed by its claws. Then he ran fast as he could to the house. The creature followed but suddenly stopped short of the hill. By then the entire family was awake and saw it on the hill staring at them. Uh, the grandparents basically told the girls to get in the bed of the truck and cover them with lots of blankets and other stuff to make a barrier in case the tr- creature jumped on them. Uh, the men in the cab of the truck staring at the hulking being, they drove past it, praying it didn't attack them. Its gaze was on the house. Suddenly it jumped off the hill, began to chase them. It stopped short of the line where the sand ended and the grass began. Ooh. Yeah. That's a weird uh, detail. Yeah. Um, and as I'm reading this, I'm being reminded of the uh, Paranormal Rangers. Yeah. Yes. Uh, a few months ago, we saw the Paranormal Rangers talk, and it was these two Native Americans who worked for this uh, umbrella-type organization of both rangers, tribal police, sheriff, first responder, and um, for the reservations in the Arizona, New Mexico area. And they had their own skinwalkery type stories like yeah. this yeah and i think it's interesting that they mentioned that whole it stopped at the boundary line of the sand meeting the grass because the grass is something living and is kind of sacred yeah you know um and evidently skinwalkers have a hard time with that and the eye descriptions are very uh very similar and um yeah but this family um they they went back the following day to get their things from the house only to find the ranch owner and numerous police and military looking people all over the area on top of this it appeared as the if the entire first floor of the home had been completely wrecked by something that's strange enough but what makes it even more surreal and off the wall is what happened when a police canine unit was released and the report says of what transpired a canine unit went to investigate the first floor was totally destroyed. The second floor was the same as well. The dogs got a scent of something and started to bark at the attic door. The officers opened the door and let the dogs uh, up in it. Uh, everybody heard the dogs fighting with something. Suddenly, the dogs were thrown out of the attic window like rag dolls. They were both skinned <coughs> alive. The two officers went inside into the attic to see what was going on. Everybody outside heard lots of gunfire and then saw one of the officers being thrown out the window. He was dead before he hit the ground. With the, when everybody looked back up towards the window, they saw the creature clear as day. It looked like a big, bald, blue-skinned man with big red eyes and sharp claws. Ooh, like a wendigo. Yeah. So not a skinwalker, more like a wendigo. Um... The high-ranking military man ordered its destruction. Everybody opened fire on it and in the house. Two guys threw grenades into the attic and it exploded. (laughs) The house was then set on fire. Grandfather and the family left but later heard that the only body found was that of the other officer. Footprints were found leading away from the house. Nothing of it was ever heard again to their knowledge. So that's... um, that's pretty insane. Yeah, it's pretty intense, right? You like that? Yeah, but that's also like um, going back to the paranormal rangers. They were talking about that investigation where a family had an encounter with something. 
not necessarily this, but dogs were on the scene and those dogs ended up dying very bad deaths. Yeah. So I kind of, with these weird paranormal humanoids that happen here in the Southwest, it's funny that they tend to attack uh, man's best friend. Oh, you know, I mean, dogs are pretty loyal to us and they do. Well, you, you know, know, the, prote- the uh, protectors. Yeah, they, they, they protect. Caitlin well. says grenades. <laughs> yeah. But, wow, there's there's a lot in this. Are we going to go over all of this? No. Okay. Because there, there is a ton of stuff. But, the, you know, I yeah. seen that one. I was like, okay, that reminded me of the Skinwalker thing. And when we went and seen the Paranormal Rangers. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. So I threw that in there. I thought that was kind of neat. And then, you know, there's a bunch of, like, these weird stories that seem to happen. So, the Bermuda Triangle, I thought, was pretty interesting. The Eagle Feather, Cuomo, yeah. stupid, but... Well, the thing that bugged you know, me the, about that... The, the humanoids, right? Because yeah. we talked about the humanoids stalking a moose with our last podcast. Mm-hmm. And we think that might be fake, right? You know, this one, it just makes you wonder, right? Yeah. It's like, okay, what's out there? What could this be mistaken for? It, there's a, b- a whole bunch of people that were involved in this so i mean it would have been pretty cool to to get like some real eyewitness sort of you know accounts of this whole thing but this was in the 70s so they're gonna you know, tell them what's going on well that's kind of like um, um but the the thought that i thought was really interesting is that it didn't it stopped at the line where the sand and the grass began yeah and it just made me you know well, it, it made me uh think about this upcoming yeah article huh if you want to finish what you were going to say, because I think I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> no, um, it, I find it very weird that a lot of what we're reading in this article, which you'll find in the show notes for this podcast yes. episode, uh, parallels a lot of what we've already heard from the paranormal rangers. And uh, just I've heard from some of my Native American friends out here. Uh, they've they've kind of mentioned the same thing, like being out towards some of the older pueblos. Yes, you kind of have this boundary line that's marked by, not just you know whoever is an elder there, but also just um, the elders will actually ask other people that live on the outskirts to keep an eye on that territory. Yeah, and funny when bad things start coming towards the pueblo, it tends to stop right there at the yep. property line. <clears throat> so, yeah. That's just true. <laughs> Very nice. So I don't know. Does that mean we need to make a like a virtual or some sort of property line around the camper when we go out? Yes. Huh. I don't know how we're gonna do that. <laughs> we should figure that out real quick. Uh, hmm. Oops. There you go. Oh, there's a fly again. Get off. Yeah. Get off me. Okay, so, you know, from listening to that, I was thinking, okay, so, you know, when you were a little kid, right? Mm -hmm. If you were in the bed and there was a monster under the bed, they couldn't get underneath the covers. They weren't allowed, right? As long as your feet weren't weren't hanging over the bed, you were safe. (laughs) Yeah. You remember? Kind of like that to have permission. You know, it's like there's a rules and permission. So I've seen this, and I kind of had to put it in here because uh, it's, it's written by Nick Redfern, who's actually a pretty interesting guy. Yeah. Um, who doesn't at all look like what his name is. It's kind of strange, but... Um, so, this is paranormal creatures that need permission, right? So, according to this, this happened February of 2016. Okay. It was a strange night. So, that's what the person wrote. He says, I went to bed around midnight, and at roughly 2 a.m. I was semi-awoken by the sounds of what began as an unintelligible disembodied mumbling. I've heard that before. <laughs> the mumbling. Have you heard that? Are you sleeping? Actually, yesterday morning I did. Yeah. You actually started laughing in your sleep. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I have a good time. It was good. It was like yeah, <laughs> very nice. <laughs> so, uh, I think I remember that. I was trying to remember what it, what it was. It was pretty funny. Yeah, I almost woke you up because I was infuriated. <laughs> I I was I haven't slept well this weekend. But he slept real good yesterday. Like, yeah, that's up to like 11. It was great. Good old time in his sleep. <laughs> it was party time. I don't know what was going on exactly. <laughs> you know, in his party time, you got to play the banjos. Oh, yeah. Anyways. 
Okay, so you have semi woken by this disembodied mumbling, right? And it says you know, the, the voices which began as unintelligible appeared to be coming from somewhere lurking in the shadows of the darkened hallway that links the bedroom to the living room. Right? Yeah. He says, I then heard it speak to me in a deep, gravelly, hoarse whisper that was not at all unintelligible. It says, I can help you. Just say yes. Ew. Yeah, hold on. We need some creepier music than that. Yeah. Let's do this one. Okay, get all fly. There yeah. we go. Yeah. Yeah. I can help you. Just say yes. So the skeptic would, would certainly almost say that what I experienced was a bout of so-called sleep paralysis, a condition which can result in the inability to move and in a sense of uh, intense and impending danger in the bedroom, right? Oh. No. I don't doubt that's what it was, um, but where I differ from the skeptics is that unlike them, I believe that sleep paralysis has an external rather than internal origin. Hmm. Yeah. So we're talking about the dream invaders of just about the vilest kind possible. Right? Mm-hmm. So it's that even in my partially asleep state, um, I knew there was nothing but dangerous deception and manipulation at work. So I said out loud, no. <laughs> there you go. That's all you got to say. <laughs> I can help you. No. Just say no, right? Just say and no. And focused to... on putting a barrier between me and it, whatever it was, I got a distinct disturbing feeling that had I said yes, I would have given the unearthly thing permission to invade my space and wreak God, lo- God knows only what kinds of havoc and mayhem. Yeah. And I also got the feeling that the thing was massively pissed by my negative response. It should be noted that tales of supernatural entities that require an invite into a person's home, or in my case, permission to provide help, are not limited to the likes of cheesy vampire movies. There are multiple dangerous things that require permission to enter our homes. Well, not even our homes, just uh, enter into our space. I mean... Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you have, the yes, the cheesy vampires, but that goes back to the written accounts of vampires. The same thing goes with, like, fey folk and uh, fairy folk. Yep. You have to accept something that they gave you such as food or small gifts yeah or clothes and that that is an invasive that is invasive that's acceptance yeah that's acceptance so um i I could totally see you know with this weird thing that he experienced i could see that being you know oh and the black-eyed kids that's another example they want into your house or they at least want you to open the door and which is funny because we haven't had any black eyed kids encounters recently. No. No. That's, that's kind of, we should go dig some of that up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's one story of Martin, right? He lives just outside of uh, Tecumseh, Oklahoma. Yeah. He had an encounter with black eyed children that occurred in 2011. Oh. And then Nick Redfern interviewed him personally just weeks after the experience, right? Yeah. He says he was home alone. Martin was home alone when he just about had the worst encounter possible. Mm-hmm. On opening the front door, he got the shock of his life. It was oh. like big, loud knock opened up the front door. Yeah. There was both a boy and a girl around 11 or 12 years of age, and they had the large, black, eerie-looking eyes. And the girl was dressed in jeans and a long sleeve black top, while the boy had an almost ubiquitous black hoodie. <laughs> and both looked sickly and scrawny as if they needed a, a hearty, warm meal in them. And I've heard this before about... Teenagers. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now they look all skinny, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So the girl said several times, "We need to eat. May we come in?" That's kind of creepy, right? Yeah. Uh, so Martin recalls that he heard her words accurately, and he felt that the girl uses the term "may we" instead of "can we." Yeah. It sounded like how people talked way back. <laughs> and then it was back when people had the manners. manners. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. He says, and there's one part missing from the, there's a portion missing from Martin's story. He can't recall how the pair got into his house. He recalls inviting them in. It felt like I said, uh, said it in a dream, right? Yeah. Like, and he says, the next thing he remembers is seeing the pair standing in front of him while uh, he was sat on his living room couch, and the girl just said one word eat. And at that point, Martin said uh, he felt deathly ill. Almost as if he had been drugged, and he has vague memories of the pair exiting his home, after which he collapsed upon his bed, and Martin didn't wake up until well into the following afternoon. Yeah. So, eat. Were they eating him? Like pulling his, were they succubuses? Or would they be succubi? Uh, succubi as plural. That sounds good. So, yeah. So, I don't know. 
Isn't it kind of weird? Yeah. Yeah. Now we've had somebody knock on our door really late at night. Yeah. And and that person was a crackhead. <laughs> Stop. Yeah, and she was like, I, can I borrow some money? And I said, no, and slammed the door in her face. Yeah. Yeah. So, I can't, was that and here? That was in that. No, that was, in, that was in Virginia. Yeah, I was trying to remember that. So. So, I tell you, you remember that, man. That's all I got to say. Just say no. Say no to black-eyed children, cheesy vampires, things that ask if they can help you from underneath your hallway or out in your hallway. That's the kind of stuff that's mm-hmm. creepy, man. You know, do you ever see that it was like a story? I don't know if it was on Facebook. I read it somewhere where there was like these little quick, like three sentence stories, like horror stories. And one of the story was, uh, my mom asked me late at night to come down to the kitchen. Right. Mm-hmm. And she said, as I walked through the hallway, my mom said, I heard it too. Oh, yeah. 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 In other words, it wasn't really your mom. It was probably a woolly booger. Something scary. I so. have somebody giving me a sleep paralysis account. Really? Yeah. Ooh, let's say it on the air. Uh, well, maybe we'll save it for later so that we can actually talk about it on a shorter or, you know, future podcast since this one's chock full of stuff. So. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I've had a couple of sleep paralysis issues myself. I did too, but mine were actually triggered by the worst thing ever. I was on a medication to help me sleep. Yeah. I had insomnia. So I went on a medication that... um, That's to keep you from walking around eating stuff. (laughs) That's what that that is. I went on a medication that was supposed to help with that, and it caused me to walk around, sleepwalk, eat eat fistfuls of wheat bread. And you know I hate wheat bread. Yeah. Yeah. Better than eating fistfuls of paint <laughs> well, and paint if, chips. If the if the paint had been in the kitchen, I probably would have eaten it. Because there was a time where apparently I had a thumbtack in my hand. Oh. Yeah. Uh, apparently I miscalculated where the bread was because that was a thing. I would go downstairs and I would eat fistfuls of... Of thumbtacks? Uh, I would open a brand new thing of wheat bread. And just eat it. That's called a loaf. Yeah, well, yeah, brand a brand new loaf. new loaf. I would get the little twisty tie thing off somehow and set it aside. That was an, and not thrown on the ground, but I set it aside. That's highly unusual <laughs> for you. Stop. And I would eat by the fistfuls, apparently, which is gross. And um, on top of that, I would get these weird bouts of uh, sleep paralysis. And the yeah. biggest thing was my leg would be stuck straight out because apparently... And it would be the same thing. I would be running away from basically the equivalent of that Brad Pitt zombie movie. Those types of zombies. Yeah. Yeah. but I think were, those are just called zombies. Yeah, but they were weird because they were all... It was one of the first movies where they were like a really rushing horde, you know, type thing. Actually, I think the first movie where the zombies were a really fast rushing horde was yeah. uh, 28 Days. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's also an allegory. You know that, right? Yes, I know. But... um. They were also vampiric, though, because they always started with biting the neck and stuff. Mm. But my leg would be shot straight out, like super straight out. And then if I got woken up during the paralysis, that leg would cramp like super worst Charlie horse ever. Or my arms would be outstretched like this. So and it was all the sleep medication that they had given me to help me sleep peacefully. You're a weirdo. So shut up. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, that's yeah. why you can't take that stuff, man. And Dirk, I have had exploding head syndrome too. And um, yeah. I've had a lot. I get that. Um, I get the exploding head when I'm really stressed out. Yeah. And I'll be laying there and you just start to doze off and you don't know whether you hear like an explosion. You know, that's what exploding head is. It's like right before you go to sleep, you hear like a loud bang or an explosion or something like that. And you don't know whether it's like somebody breaking into your house or if it's just all in your head, right? Yeah. Call it the exploding head thing. Dirk points out something very interesting because this happened to me when I was um, about 25, 26. I was doing a lot of traveling and working full time. And um, I would just be so exhausted, but I'd know I'd have something I need to do soon, you know, four hours later, five hours later. And I'd start to nod off. And as soon as I'd nod off, exploding head syndrome. And it would be funny because my whole body would shake when it would happen because I'd be like, ah, you know. So um, yeah. 
Yeah. But and it, see, <laughs> a lot of people yeah. will take um there's a fly. I hate that fly. We'll take sleep paralysis and mix it in with the old hag syndrome. Yeah. And they're two different things. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. Does it mean you can be you can have sleep paralysis and not have the old hag sitting on you, sucking the life out of you? So it's just a terrible thing. Yeah, but I think you know the more stressed out and the more wore out you are, the more you're susceptible to exploding head and sleep paralysis. Yeah. You know, I, I kind of think it's also related to you're 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 laying there and you're getting ready to go to sleep and your your brain just kind of misfires a little bit. But that old and then head, it's like you can't breathe, you yeah. know, and you're stuck. Well, mine would be like a serious like I thought I heard something explode, you know, and it was because well, I was I'm so, not talking about exploding yeah. head. I mean, exploding head is exactly yeah. that. Like you can hear like a loud bang, yeah, or an explosion, and like I said, you don't know whether it's in the house like you need to jump up and fight a monster or if it's in your head yeah so not to be uh you know confused with the post hypnic jerk which is that little jerk you get like right before you, you go to sleep and your whole body does like a jerk where you yeah. jerk like three inches off the bed <laughs> you know so i yeah. get that a lot too it's like, Bam! I'm like oh. yeah yeah come on man but i think what's interesting is that whole exhausted part is a very it, yeah it's yeah. exhaustion and stress and exhaustion huge and here's the thing, exhaustion and stress hand in hand. Uh kind of wear down your your will. Yep. So, um which means it wears down your consent. When you're so worn down and you're so exhausted, you almost have near no consent or no ability to protect yourself from mm -hmm. things like exploding head, old hag, sleep paralysis, or the malicious entities that might be may or may not be behind those things. Yeah. So there could be an old hag just waiting for you to work two double shifts just so she can invade your brain, you know? So it's possible. I think it is. So <laughs> I don't know. I do yeah. know that when it come when the when the chips start to fall, I fight in my sleep, so I'm I'm pretty good with that. Oh, that's creepy. Yeah. Um my little brother mentions that his wife hears someone calling her name right before she wakes up. Yeah, that's uh that's kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, but they got like six kids, man. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah, and I'll be honest with you, I've had that before too where... You do have a bunch of soulless gingers in your house. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I've had that too like right before I wake up where I hear, you know, somebody calling me. Yeah. Yeah. The only scary thing is it happened to me one time where um, I got called awake by my daughters and they weren't home. I had that happen. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what got me super creeped out that yeah because you know they didn't they didn't always stay at my house so you know it was the weekends and that kind of stuff but you know i would wake up going in there to see what they wanted because i heard them clear as day and they weren't there i had something similar happen yeah. when i was living with my parents for a while yeah. um that's you know, super creepy i i always thought my stepmom was waking me up and this happened for like a week and i always thought yeah. she was waking me up around 10 a.m she wasn't even in the house hmm but it was always near 10 a.m. And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah, so it always messed me up. But yeah. He, oh, he's saying right before she goes to sleep. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's aggravating. Yeah. So. <laughs> but it's probably your kids. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it makes it even worse. <laughs> it's like you're just about to fall asleep. And you're like, mommy. I'm like, what? <laughs> so. It's the exploding kid syndrome, right? When your kids are yelling in your head. That'd be terrible, man. Exploding kid syndrome. I hate syndrome. that. I hate that. that like, right before you fall asleep, somebody wants to yell your name and wake you up. <laughs> You're like, really? I need some uh, water. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me a story. I felt pretty bad one time because my oldest came and wake me up. She was like three or four. And you shouldn't, you know, don't. You can't do that. You can't just go up to the side of somebody and yell in their face. <laughs> so... It actually socked her pretty hard in the gut. And she felt she was really mad about it. I mean, you know, it hurt her, but <sighs> I felt really bad because I punched her really hard because I didn't. It wasn't even aware of it. You know, it happens. You, you don't go creeping up on some people, especially if they fight in their sleep. It's not good. So yeah. after that, she would just stand at the foot of the bed and go, "Dad, Dad!" Like really loud. You know. <laughs> So, and the you know, funny thing is, is that my youngest does the same thing or did the same thing because I guess she learned it from her sister. 
And when they send me text messages, they do that like really loud. Dad, <laughs> this is one word. It's all capital letters. Dad, like they're yelling at me. So yeah, if Katie is still listening, she knows she does it because that's, that's how I get my text. Yeah. Dad in capital letters, like they're yelling at me. <laughs> but it works though. I look at oh hey, that, that should so. be a T-shirt. Exploding kid syndrome. No, <laughs> Dad. <laughs> like Dad. <laughs> kind of funny. Oh no. Yeah. That's no. Kids are terrible. They're not terrible. You're terrible. Uh, uh, they cause a lot of issues. <laughs> yeah. You can't eat a candy bar alone. That's true. You know what's just as bad as kids as dogs. Yeah. You can't eat a candy bar without a dog knowing, or any kind of snack or delicious treat or whatever. Dogs come running right. They hear that cellophane. Pay. They, they hear everything. They're like, oh, <laughs> here he goes. You have to like hide in the bathroom to eat a Snickers bar. <laughs> so you don't want to share with your dog, right? <laughs> Because you can't tell them, oh, a little bit of chocolate's probably not good for you because they don't give a crap. They're sitting there and it's like looking at you with that pained look on their face. That desperate, you're not going to give me any look. Same look that kids have. It's terrible. And you, know, you can only be mean so many times. It is kind of fun just to eat it all, just like look at it and be like, yeah, look what I did. Yeah, you didn't get any. You know why? Because then you get all hurt and they go tell on you and you get in trouble. You know why? Why? Several dogs don't go tell me. They try to. They just go in there. <laughs> Actually, Pepper, you'll be eating something, and Pepper comes, runs in, and tells me. Starts. She is a tattletale. <laughs> Does a little dance around, like, "Hey, hey, something's going on in the living room." <laughs> yeah. But you know why? Why that works on you? The guilt trip that dogs have on you, like when they look all pitiful. Go ahead. It's because there's something hardwired into humans where we recognize baby faces, infant and child faces as something that we should nurture. Hmm. Well, that same face shape or same uh, geometric pattern is found in the faces of dogs as well as some primates. That's not cool. So that's why <clears throat> we want to protect them and give them things they probably shouldn't have. Like a bite off of a burrito and stuff, you know, so or chicken nuggets. Yeah. So. <clears throat> Gross. Yes. So that was a that was a little bit of a tangent from spooky creatures needing your permission. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. <laughs> I do think it's weird though, because it's like um, I I think it can go in a reverse as well, like as far as like haunted locations. So. Like what? If you approach a haunted location, as soon as you step onto the territory of that location, you feel that presence. Yeah. And um, past the the boundaries of that territory or that area, especially with me when I go to some of the uh, Pueblo ruins out here, as soon as I step onto, not necessarily the park, but the actual location of where the ruins are, yeah, that's where I'm like, the hair stands up, I get a little creeped out. I'm constantly turning around because I think somebody is looking at me type thing. Hmm. That just happens to me. Like, it's happened to me in Jimenez. Yeah, there's a lot of places, man. I call those places the Badlands. Yeah. Where but things a little weird. Texas got a bunch of Badlands. Yeah. So. I want to still see some of those. But, yeah, like, the last time we went to Jimenez in the wintertime and we were at that church thing. Yeah. I wandered off my own way and you wandered off, like, completely east or whatever. And you're taking pictures of stuff. And I'm taking pictures inside uh, the primary church building area of the Jimez ruins. And I kept turning around because I thought there was another tourist there taking pictures. And I never saw him, but I just kept feeling like there's there's another guy. There's a guy here, and he's he's here. And he's looking through windows, and he's doing stuff. To the point where I gave up, and I'm like, you know what? I don't know if I'm in somebody's shot or if there's a freaking ghost following me. I'm just going to go. Could be go a shadow person. You. So. Or it Which could are, be a pervert. There are a lot of shadow people in Texas. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Is there a lot of perverts in Texas? Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, Dirk pointed out. Uh, yeah, I used to have that at the plantation home at Chick Chippo. I can't say that. C H I Chipoke State Park when he was an interpretive ranger, aka tour guide. <laughs> yeah. Um I I got a little creeped out too much there. No, I've heard that place. That place is pretty creepy actually. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, I don't I don't remember if I've been there or not. So I don't know. But I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a, a quick break here on the old uh, Creep Geeks podcast and play a little bit of a commercial. Mm-hmm. 
and then we'll come back and we'll talk more about some stuff and other stuff okay so very nice so let's do this your chair is really creaky i'm sorry it's very creaky very creaky chair yeah Audible is an audio entertainment that entertains, educates, and inspires. For you, the listeners of the Cheap Geek Creek Geeks podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com forward slash cheap geek. Again, that's audibletrial.com forward slash cheap geek for your free audiobook. The longest commercial ever. <laughs> Do <you> stop? <laughs> And we're back on the Creep Geeks Podcast. It's episode number 90. We need to change our commercial. No, we don't because the link is still for Cheap Geeks. That's why I left it as is. I'm not that silly. (laughs) And you're like, oh, he made a mistake. How quickly you are incorrect because we don't have a sponsor for Creep Geeks. The sponsor is for Cheap Geek. So if you do want to get a free Audible trial, you can still use the link for Creep. I'm sorry, for Cheap Geek, and it works just fine. So So Brittany is watching. Hello, Brittany. Welcome to the show. And there we go. So it begins again on the Creep Geeks podcast. And just to kind of recap what we talked about, we talked about uh, Cuomo and his stupid eagle feather. Right? Mm-hmm. We talked about a couple of scary stories where people wanted permission or something wanted permission. Right? Oh, uh, yeah. We talked about something else. I don't remember what it was. Skinwalkers. Skinwalkers. And possible skinwalkers. In Texas. Humanoids in Texas. Which has me creeped out for my friend. So, yes. Yeah. So now we're going to talk about something a little bit more lighthearted. 
Oh. Yeah. These are stupid stories from <laughs> stupid things and stupid <laughs> places. And well, these are just happen to be from New Mexico. So here we go, right? Here's a, there's a fly. If you guys see me flopping around, I'm not being all crazy. There's a fly who's going to die. He is being die. crazy. No. No. I'm going to turn your mic down. This is just like, you know what? When the kids act up in the car, you just turn off their window controls, right? Yeah. Stop it. Stop touching me. There you go. See? Go ahead. Nobody can hear you talk. <laughs> there you go. See what see what happened there. All right. So to kind of get back where we were before, I had to punish my partner, <laughs> my wife, <laughs> who's trying to wreck stuff. Let me play some punishment music for you. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Some dueling banjos. Don't touch my stuff. Hey, I'm trying to do a show here. Stop it. No, you're not. Pay attention to the camera and your computer. You're not trying to do a show. Yes, I am. <laughs> really? What was that? So in Mexico City, right, there's a restaurant that's been busted over. Guess what? What? Protected tarantula tacos. Protected tarantula? Yeah. Tacos? You can get a fancy tarantula taco for a cool $27. Oh, that's disgusting. Not so fast, Mexican authorities say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's a Mexico City restaurant recently put the arachnids on its menu and posted a video on Facebook showing the chef torching one until it blackened. Oh. Uh. Yeah. The only problem is the Mexican red rump tarantula is a protected species. That's disgusting. Yeah. And so the Federal Environmental Protection Agency said Tuesday it was alerted to the situation via social media and seized four tarantula corpses. They were ready to be served on tortillas. <laughs> right? So the tarantula tacos are apparently uh, on an offer for 500 pesos or 50 times the price of a basic street taco. Oh, this is disgusting. Yeah. So the restaurant's menu also features other creepy crawlies, such as grasshoppers, worms, ant eggs, which have a long tradition in Mexican cuisine, scorpions, which are a little bit less common, no, I've and seen, gross. I've seen scorpions served in India and uh, Southeast Asia. Well. So, but. $27 for a tarantula taco. Why would you pay almost $30 for a spider taco? Because you're stupid. That's disgusting. And there's people out there like, oh man, bugs are great. They're full of protein. Those people are sociopaths, right? Yeah. Serial killers. So. They're right up on the order of people that don't match their socks. If you're listening, Dave. <laughs> so. Yes. Okay, in the comments, this is one of my favorite comments so far, but now since you've responded to me directly, everyone's going to think I'm nuts. <laughs> that's true. That's what happens. Oh. So, and Brittany says that's a hard no on the tarantula taco. This fly is going to die. So. Worms, no. Actually, Mo was just bringing up uh, topics for future podcast and short stories yeah, well, that we're going to do. I know, but so. you, you, you don't have to tell everybody because... Anyways. That just kind of keeps it going. So, yeah, I thought that was pretty terrible that, you know, hey, in Mexico, you can get a, a fancy tarantula taco for $27. I have eaten a worm on a bet, though. That is gross. So, yeah. Uh, I've eaten a worm, a couple of them, at the bottom of a bottle of tequila. Yeah. So, there's that. You know, and there's a there's a trick to getting out of there too. People making like bets, you know. Yeah. You can turn the bottle upside down. The worm floats all the way down the bottom where the cap is. You pop the cap off. Boom! Do your shot. There you go. You ate the worm. You get your fifty bucks or whatever it is you're betting for. <laughs> yep. <sighs> Learn that in the navy. All sorts of things. I put a learn link. how to protect a country and eat tequila worms, amongst other things. But I, I put a link to yeah. the tarantula tacos. Yeah, you know what? Tarantula from taco could remove the fly problem. That's true. It's that's absolutely true. There's like one freaking fly in here, man, and yeah. he's persistent. Aggressive flies aggressive. here in New Mexico. <laughs> All the bugs here are aggressive. Well, they they're like, oh, your mouth's open. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's an invite, right? They don't need permission. If your mouth is open, they're going in. Flies don't need consent. Like, oh, your eyes open, going in, right? Flies don't need consent. Only yeah. vampires and shadow The people. openness of your yeah. orifice is... Well, yeah. we went camping last weekend, and we actually left early because of how bad the bugs got. And by left early, you mean the next day? Yeah. Yes. Because so. I wasn't going through that again. Yeah. Well. He's just sitting on top of my computer. He's like, he's making fun of me. 
He probably is. So. We should give him his own microphone and set of headphones. He can be probably a contributor. More, probably be more interesting than the junk we're talking about right now. <laughs> so, uh, you know, speaking of squirrels, we've talked about squirrels in the past, right? Yeah. And here you go. This is some uh, weird news for you. Man being pursued by baby squirrel calls police for help. <laughs> So I read this article completely looking for a picture of said dude who called the police for help from Baby Squirrel. Yeah. To see if he had a man bun. <laughs> but no picture. There is a picture of a baby squirrel okay. sleeping, right? Mm-hmm. Get out of here. Okay, so uh, this happened on August 15th. A squirrel originally named Carl Friedrich, Aww. right, Yeah. has been found to be female and renamed to Pipolita. So that's an update that happened on August 15th. Okay. So they, they had to throw that out there because this is a an animal rescue agency that says, hey, we need to make sure that everybody understands that, you know, baby Carl Frederick is actually a girl. Oh. I don't know. Okay. So it kind of goes like this. A man in Germany may not have been in danger when he called the cops on a baby squirrel chasing him, but it all worked out in the end for the squirrel. <laughs> Right, <laughs> emergency services were called. Right, and this is in the town of Karush. I don't know how to say that. They got a call on Thursday from a man panicked that the tiny animal would not stop following him around. Aww. So when police arrived at the scene where the squirrel ultimately ended the pursuit by lying down and going to sleep. <laughs> so the squirrel knew what time it was. He's like, I'm done. I've been chasing this guy around. You know? Yeah. And so what they're saying is it turned out that the squirrel was uh, actually the one who needed help, not the scary guy with the lack of a man bun <laughs> in Germany. And so, and what happens is they're saying it, this happens often with squirrels who've lost their mothers. They'll, they'll find a replacement and then they focus all their efforts on that one person. So this dude had to have had a man bun. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. A little furry red squirrel on top of his head. And he's like, oh, here we go. There's my new mom. Yeah. So, oh, So, thing. and there's a picture of the squirrel resting comfortably after its apparent reign of terror. And they've got him in like a paper towel. <laughs> Just sleeping. So the squirrel, now named Carl Friedrich, which has been changed. We know that it's people leading now. Is in the care of an animal rescue center, and they posted a statement on Facebook about the critter, including several durable photos about the squirrel. And they're feeding him with an eyedropper and stuff like that. And look at his claws. Let me see. It's terrible. Oh, they're tiny. So the baby squirrel chase is the second police-involved squirrel incident to make international headlines this summer. Last month, a London woman called the police after she heard loud noises in her home and suspected to be a burglar. But the intruder turned out to be a rogue squirrel. <laughs> Those damn squirrels, right? Yeah. And it says, although the authorities in the German case said that the squirrel did need assistance, wildlife experts generally warn that before intervening with a squirrel that you suspect has been orphaned, you should do your best to make sure the creature truly requires help. Okay. Yeah, because the Wildlife Center of Virginia, which gets hundreds of calls annually about supposed orphan squirrels, published a handy guide to help determine whether or not the animal needs help or not, and if it does, what you can actually do. So when in doubt, contact a wildlife rescue or rehab center or animal control. Now, I put this in the podcast because we talked before about the rogue squirrel that went and jumped in the bicycle rim. Remember? Oh, yeah. And remember that politician? He was running for re-election. Yeah. And that squirrel took him out. And this is like in New York. <laughs> called, he was like in a hospital and stuff because the, because and he had just killed the budget to the parks or something crazy like that. There was some kind of like conspiracy between oh, wow. the squirrel and, you know, it jumped in his bicycle tire and it wrecked him. That was like in one of our podcasts. And I vaguely <laughs> remember that where the squirrel took him out after he talked some trash i think about the parks or something like oh, that oh chicago <laughs> yeah, chicago, yeah. Alderman. chicago that's what it was a chicago yeah. alderman got taken out by a rogue squirrel a suicide bomber squirrel hop hospitalizes chicago politician <laughs> yeah, yeah. who spoke out against <laughs> yeah you remember yeah yeah who spoke out against squirrels <laughs> so <laughs> yeah yeah. You know, the other day, here's a comment. Man bun gangs just knocked the pumpkin IPA out of their hands. Yeah. That's true. Which is funny because squirrels. We see a bunch of like crazy looking people walking around being all, you know, shifty yeah. looking. Well, and it's like, man, what are they doing? Yeah. But then we identified a couple man buns. Like, ah, no worry. No threat. Yeah. Squirrels like pumpkin. That's probably why they, they chase after. I don't think so. I yeah. think that squirrel said, you know what? You're going to talk a little trash? <laughs> you want some of this? <laughs> Squirrels are pretty frisky, man. You've seen them. 
I see them during the spring so. when they go all crazy and run exactly. out to the road and run. Get all drunk. You ever seen the drunk squirrels <laughs> running around just peeing on stuff, laying in the middle of the sidewalk? A girl in... It, Squirrel? No, a girl I work with told a funny story about that. So squirrels will case neighborhoods during, yes. during fall for people who have jack-o'-lanterns and pumpkins on their front porches. And the squirrels just keep an eye and pay attention to how long those pumpkins are there. And then once the pumpkin starts to turn a little bit... Uh, it gets the, a little ripened. It gets a little <clears throat> ripened or a little too ripe. Well, the way it's ripened turns into basically like beer for squirrels. Yep. So the squirrel will crush into the pumpkin and just get mad drunk and then just go crazy in the neighborhood. So. Much like your uncle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everybody's got a drunk uncle. Yeah. Yeah. So interesting uh, tidbit uh, that squirrels like get drunk off pumpkin. But I like how they had to update. His name is no longer Carl. It's Pipodita. <laughs> So, I guess they didn't want to insult the yeah the rogue squirrel. Very uh, nice. Yeah. So, in other uh, other news, and this is um, you know, I don't know if I want to talk about that one yet. There's been a compound that was destroyed after a raid in New Mexico. Well, I should. We'll talk a little. We won't go too much into it. Um, you can. Okay. And you go for it. In the past two and a half weeks, there has been a lot of terrible news coming out of New Mexico. Um, the primary being that a compound was found in uh, Taos, New Mexico. And at that compound, there was a man who was wanted uh, nationwide for possibly kidnapping his own son or some family member. Yeah, from yeah. Ge- it was his son from Georgia. From Georgia. Well, his disabled son from Georgia. Yeah. So this raid occurred, and it was um, a northern NM p- compound. Basically, these people were, uh, were they squatting? No. Well, no, not. Uh, yeah. They're not saying. Yeah. See, and there was different reports. Some was they were leasing the land. Some reports were that they were squatting. But basically, there was this makeshift compound um, up in Taos, New Mexico. And there were three women, a bunch of neglected children. Yeah. And a raid was performed where this man, the women, and somebody else was arrested. And soon, um, the remains of a child were, were found. So it's, it's just been more and more horrifying stories coming out of New Mexico. And then on top of that, uh, the compound was in a terrible state. And one of the judges assigned to the case actually let these people go. Yeah. And then the attorney general had to step in and say, are you kidding me? This is one of the problems I have in New Mexico. And... <laughs> it just kept getting worse and worse for people who live here and you know follow the local news it just has become just a terrible terrible story so now the property owner of where this compound was built uh, has uh, said there is a court order allowing the seizure of the stolen trailer that was on the, the compound and the rest is going to be basically tore down so Good, because it was the site of some terrible stuff. There were multiple makeshift buildings on the property, and um, those buildings, one of those was the one that stored the remains of a child, unfortunately. Yeah. And then uh, there was another makeshift shelter where some of these children were reported to have been trained on school shootings. And it's just something that makes you want to turn the TV off and just not think about how bad things are yeah and over the past couple weeks this on top of um there have been two child deaths in the past two weeks not even relating to this it makes me feel really bad about new mexico so i'm kind of glad that this compound where all these terrible things were happening is being bulldozed i kind of wish it were set on fire you know there's a lot of tires it wouldn't be good to set on Uh, that's true so yeah yeah and then, oh, I didn't see this article. Um, what in the world? Oh. NM couple meets with suspects arrested at compound. It doesn't even show anymore. No. So, see, because yeah. the problem is, is that, and this is a New Mexico problem, people do horrible stuff and then they get released. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, 
Uh, anyway, it, it's it, you know they found a boy. He's been badly decomposed, and yeah. he was hidden in a tunnel. Yeah. And you know they're not saying you know what these people were up to, but and there is there is lots of stuff that points to the fact that the, this compound that was created that the the parents. Because all these people were kind of related. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Um, were spooling up their children to go sh- have school shootings and con- conduct school shootings. You know? And you know what they're not saying? And, and everybody's being real cautious to not say that, you know, these were, they're Muslim. Yeah. Oh, here's and Which, article. you know, shouldn't really matter so much, but it kind of does because, uh, you know, it, that's kind of a terrorist thing to do. To starve children and then teach them about school shootings? Yeah. yeah that's inciting terror. And yeah. the problem with the article, it finally shows up, because I had to change a character for some reason. They tried to take the article down. Um, a Muslim couple met with these suspects that are currently being held in jail. Yeah. And they have the audacity to, quote, in the current climate with so much Islamophobia and so much racism, I just hope these people can get a fair trial. Well, I hope they do, too. But at the same time, they did a horrible thing. It's not about them being Muslim. It's about them starving these children nearly to death and teaching them to commit horrible acts. And it's about murdering a child and then hiding him on on squatted property and in a tunnel nothing to do with racism and nothing to do with islamophobia yeah I, I that is the point of this particular article in front of me and that infuriates me you are not going to hide behind a part of yourself to cover up your despicable acts that's that is not the way things go yeah and in, in the comments mm-hmm. um yeah, he killed and buried him in a shallow grave on the property where they were making their faith-oriented school shooter school. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's funny because you don't hear that stuff out of our news in New Mexico where it occurred. You're hearing it from other states yeah. where, it, yeah, it's a little aggravating. But our state doesn't discuss that. Our state just does stupid stuff like the first two judges. Well, one of them had a bomb threat against them. Yeah. So obviously that one's like, uh, you know, and then the next judge uh, decides that according to state laws that were put in place about two years ago with judges, if they can't bring the right evidence or bring certain charges within X period of time, you have to let the people go. Yeah. And the attorney general had to go, are you kidding me? Step in and say, no, these people are remaining in jail. I mean, the dude already fled from Georgia while kidnapping. Yeah. And he had multiple other things going on. So uh, how you could release these people is just beyond logic to me. And it makes me really just want to rant about all the terrible things that have been happening in New Mexico recently. But that's not the focus of what I should think about while living here in the Southwest. There's so well, much. I got a rant. Yeah. Okay, so Wells Fargo was in big trouble for making, like, open up credit cards and stuff like that, basically, oh, yeah. and misusing customer information, right? Yeah. And this was like a couple of years ago, and they've been trying really hard. We've seen the commercials where they're trying really hard to regain your trust and all that stuff, right? Yeah. So here we go. It's kind of a done deal about what happened with Wells Fargo. You know, class action lawsuits were filed. Money is going to be divvied out. And here we go. The attorney general for our state, right, in New Mexico, (laughs) where we currently reside, he files a suit, Mm -hmm. seeks damages from Wells Fargo. He's the New Mexico state attorney general, Hector Balderas. Yeah. He says that his office has filed a lawsuit and is seeking damages from Wells Fargo for for opening unauthorized accounts in names of thousands of New Mexicans. Okay. Right? Yeah. And I'm like, why? What are you doing? There's there's already been a class action lawsuit. This has already been taken up. This is this is why now? Why are you doing this now? Way late, way after the fact. Yeah. Right? <coughs> Excuse me. So what he says is it's deeply troubling that a company with this much at stake in our state would mislead New Mexico consumers, allowing unlawful profiteering, and we look forward to seeking justice in a court of law. This has already occurred. Yeah. 
So who's doing the unlawful profiteering now? I mean, this, him. This is going on. Why is he doing? There's no point yeah. in doing this, right? He says, according to the office, the attorney general, more than twenty thousand accounts may have been open without authorization. This has been going on for what three or four years now. Yeah, and here's yeah. what he says: he will direct the funds recovered to go towards increasing financial literacy for students and at-risk families in the state. Um. Hmm. Okay, and then he puts, if you've had an unauthorized account open, you're asked to file a complaint online here or call the attorney general. Yeah. It's like, okay, I'm like, so I'm reading, I'm like, what's what's the point, right? Yeah. And so Wells Fargo released a statement according to the, or in response to the attorney general's suit. And it says, we remain focused on rebuilding the trust towards a better being a better bank. As a company, we have taken significant steps towards to make things right for our New Mexico customers, team members, and communities, right? Yeah. These steps include a national, nationwide class action settlement agreement that sets aside $142 million for customer remediation and settlement expenses. We have also conducted broad outreach and worked directly with customers to resolve issues through complaints process and free mediation services. We have completed a review of retail banking accounts dating back to the beginning of 2009 to determine potentially unauthorized accounts provide refunds and credits to those that have incurred those fees and charges. That includes our New Mexico customers. We continue to welcome and encourage customers with questions or concerns to contact us. Wells Fargo values long-term customer and client relations with our over you know, 1,300 team members in New Mexico are committed to the success of our communities. Our core business strategy is to help our customers succeed financially, and we are committed in helping our New Mexico, Mexico customers reach, uh, reach their financial goals. So why the hell? Is the Attorney General for New Mexico getting involved now? Yeah, especially. Why? What's the point? By him getting involved in filing a class action lawsuit against a class action lawsuit that's already been filed nationally, Yeah. it can set this whole process back and over again. And it can also reduce the total amount that this company has already ponied up. Which is, I mean, get it, they're, so, they're, they're wrong. Yeah. They did what they had to do. So it's like, okay, hold on a second. So he's banking on the fact that Wells Fargo is just going to settle and give him whatever he wants. But you know what? And, and wait a minute. Yeah. He's like, if you have a problem and you file a complaint, and then he's going to take the money. That should go to you, possibly. That should go and says, we will direct the funds recovered to go towards increasing financial literacy for students and at-risk families in the state. <laughs> This guy's running for re-election. Yep. This is obviously something to get him in the good graces so that he can run for re-election. But, dude, it's too late. You waited so freaking long to do this. Now you look like an asshole. Yeah. Because, I mean, Wells Fargo was wrong completely. And we have Wells Fargo. They're wrong. They're trying to make it better. They got caught. They've got all the money set aside, $143 million. They're trying to get it out and get it to the people. Yeah. And here comes this dude. He needs to take that money and he wants to give it to somebody else, which is okay. But why do it now when it's already been done? This case has been done. Because. So that he can get reelected. It's right. He can get reelected so that he can save face because part of his. Oh, campaign, he doesn't have to save face. He just needs to like, look what I'm doing for the people. But his campaign platform has been promoting literacy, even though he's an attorney general. Yeah, because, I get it. Yeah. I, I get all that. I totally get it. And there is no money <laughs> for it. But. You know, yeah, he's, it's just bull, it's BS, it's wrong. Yeah, and on top of that, you know what this is going to do? This is going to gonna. It's going to take the process that's already in place, it's already been figured out, it's already been established and convoluted. No, what's even worse is Wells Fargo is one of the few banks here in New Mexico that's almost everywhere. Um, and then you have smaller banks. There's not a lot of banks Well, they also have here. 1,300 people working. Yeah, they have 1,300 them. people working for them here in New Mexico. They're going to take their business elsewhere. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Wells Fargo started shutting up shop. It's just, it's, it's kind of like, wh why are you doing this now? Yeah. You know, it, it makes me wonder, did he reach out and ask them for money? Like, hey, you should contribute. And they said no. Yeah. And then he's like, okay, well, I'll just go ahead and follow the suit. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't trust lawyers. And I, I don't. <laughs> and my thing is. And this guy, man, is this to me seems like this is just a straight up, a, you know, a feather in the cap for reelection. New Mexico has a ten New Mexico politicians, I should say. New Mexico politicians have a tendency to go after certain things because some small group of constituents told them to. 
and they will they will hunt that down they'll just keep pursuing it just because some small minor group of constituents blame or want them to focus on that one thing and what it'll do it'll drive that business away it'll drive that entity away google's gone uh amazon's gone from albuquerque as far as a business that conducts itself in the state yeah um did you really try to, you know, see if Wells Fargo would pony up something and they said no, so now you're going to sue them? Okay. Well, let's see that. Let's see that business disappear from New Mexico. Yeah. That's what I feel. I mean, as to the dumbness of this, I mean, like, this goes back to 2009. All the suits started happening about four years ago. Like, they, they hit the rise. Right? Yeah, so why is he doing this now yeah. in August 2018 after yeah. things have been established? It's like, oh, did I, was I not involved in this? I mean, like, you know. Oh, this looks good for me. And, yeah. and, you know, when you say you're going to do it for the good of the people, right? But it, but really what you're doing is trying to further your own political yeah. aspirations there. It's got a problem with that, man. And, you know, one of the comments here is... Uh, an experience somebody had with Wells Fargo and their ha their home mortgage. And yeah, that stuff happened. And yes, Wells Fargo should pay for it, but they should pay for it through direct mediations between that individual and them, the agents or the bank itself, not through a state attorney general who isn't even going to compensate you for your loss. Yeah, Instead, and why is he even involved? to a failed literacy program yeah. that is not working out here. Why is he even involved? So, yeah. That's the point. It's like, really? You got other stuff to worry about. You know, it's like, where, where are you? Yeah. Is this a, like a diversionary tactic? I don't know. It just, I read it. I'm like, <laughs> why? What? Yeah. And, you know, I even looked to see if it was an old news article. Nope. Nope. What, like, what's the date on this? I don't know. Oh, August something. Uh, 17th, like maybe Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. So it's a current thing. It's like, oh, we're going to get out there and we're going to sue them. Yeah. Why are you trying to break what's already been put in place? You know, I, I'm not I'm not trying to cut Wells Fargo any slack whatsoever. I just look at the people who've been wronged by this and they're getting a settlement or whatever to kind of make their lives a little bit better or whatever it winds up being. And then here comes New Mexico going to jump in there and wreck the whole damn thing. If he's claiming to stand for those people and represent them. Only they, New Mexicans. Yeah. Only, well, they're they, already covered. They had the opportunity. And I don't like it when I hear from people. I don't know how to get what's rightfully mine back. There are resources. Do your research. Use the freaking internet, man. There, A, there's internet. There is free legal counsel for people Stupid. who have been afflicted by uh, things like this, like yeah. scams, stuff like that. Because they know if you've been affected financially, you're going to need the legal resources to get your money and then from well, and there, that's why they have mediation in place yeah. most places now you can't even it was such, we're living in such a litigious society you can't even sue them you have to use and that's another thing mediation. this just speaks louder to new mexico being a litigious litigious i can't say it today. litigious society Litig here yes. well i mean that's just the u.s in general right now but yeah but it but, seems to be pretty big out it, here <laughs> it, it, it seems like there's a yeah. lot of entitlement that happens here or people think they're entitled to it and it's like here it is this attorney general doing the same thing you know what he should be doing is is trying to figure out why these judges want to let terrible people off yeah and out you know like oh well we, we don't have any evidence to present right now so we're going to go ahead and let you go yeah. you know it's just ridiculous so. kind of uh, angers me a little bit yeah it's like really why are you doing this yep <sighs> what are you cheesing at no, just it it annoys me because and I can't speak intelligently to it, but it was one of the things I noticed when I moved here to New Mexico was that there seemed to be a lot of um, lawsuits and weird like legal activity that really bugged me yeah. to the point where like I had somebody at Walgreens explain to me why Walgreens coupons you find online can't apply to certain states, including New Mexico. It was because not only did um, some, uh, what do you call those people who buy lots of stuff? Would they be super couponers? Co yeah, extreme couponers. Not only did extreme couponers wreck the yeah. prices and take advantage of these coupons, but then if they were told no, they immediately grabbed a lawyer and sued. Yeah. 
I, I mean, to something so simple as like a five cent coupon. You can buy something from a thrift store here. And by law, you have seven days to return it. Yeah. Even if you wear it. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. You can go to a thrift store and buy, and then you can return it. Demand a refund. It's like, what? In Virginia, you can't. Like, yeah. Yeah, hey, man, all sales are final, but no. Oh, wait. I have a local Walmart so. here. And the thing I like to enjoy is I'll go to our local Walmart and I might need a t-shirt or I might need, you know, a quick pair of jeans or something, right? And I like going through the aisles and finding stuff from NY and Co or Target. Yeah. Because it got returned to this Walmart and, and they had to take it. They're like, you know what? It's just easier. It's just easier if we just take it back. I, it's like It was from, it was a shirt from Target and it was really cute. I almost got it, but it fit too tight. Yeah. I had the audacity to bring it into the trying on room to You're try like, it on. I'm going to buy this NY and Co shirt. <laughs> and they have to take it. And that kind of stuff just bothers me. Yeah. Well, I mean, so, it kind of is what it is, right? Yeah. Speaking of it is what it is, it is about to be the end of this podcast. And this is kind of, you know, episode number 90. <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't know. Mm. Yeah. So this being episode 90 still have a headache we were shooting still being attacked by flies you know we were shooting for 100 episodes with cheap geek but we think the name change needs to happen now while we're still growing and we're still, while we're still young still young you know um but our goal is within the next 10 episodes to really cement look this is going to be more about creepy stuff paranormal stuff the 14 and, and funny stuff and funny stuff so uh, which is kind of funny because we've kind of ended this on a down note, ranting <laughs> downward yeah. spiral. Yeah. But um, yeah, uh, we're also planning to do whenever we go out and, and head to some of our adventures, because since we have a new van and it's expensive and it rides very nice, we're going to start heading off on those weekend adventures again, like we used to do with the Great White Buffalo. Yeah. But we're thinking that we're going to start maybe making little mini documentaries of the places we go. Yeah. So you should be be sure to tune in for that. Um. Yeah, little mini documentaries. So, mini um, docs. Are we gonna put those on Cheap Geek or Creep Geeks? Creep Geeks. Okay. All right. So. I don't know. We got a lot of figuring out to do. Well, if we want people to see him, we need to put them on Cheap Geeks. But <laughs> you know, part of it is is that we fund all of this out of our own pockets. So any kind of money we get that we can put towards it Jay from has different mentioned avenues. Again. Jay mentioned again. I have headache medicine. <laughs> He also puts out what's wrong with tight shirts. Uh, hey, man, if that shirt's like a sausage skin, it's time. You know, it's maybe <laughs> kind of move up a size, right? Yeah. So anyway, we got to figure that out. But it kind of is what it is. And eventually it's going to get to the point where we are going to have like a Patreon where we can be just as completely uncensored as we want to be. Yeah. But that's in the future. But if you're listening right now and you've been paying attention to the Cheap Geek Podcast, which is now the Creep Geeks Podcast, it's been very much appreciated. So you should stick around. Uh, we yeah, Sundays, man. We're going to do this on Sundays. And we're going to start setting a hard time for Sundays being right around either 5.15 or 5.30. So whatever you think, leave us a comment. Let us know. You know, that's Eastern Standard Time, by the way. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. That's our time, Mountain Standard Time. So it's kind of up to you guys what you want to do. So, But before we go, I'd like you to listen to the sounds of Saturn. creepy still yeah so sound of saturn yeah so if people want to reach out to us about this particular podcast episode or anything about the podcast how should they reach out to us they should use the email address do you know know what it is what is yours uh we have greg at creepgeeks.com we have contact at creepgeeks.com we have omi at creepgeeks.com Yes, right. We actually bought a domain name. <laughs> yeah. And then if you'd like to follow us on Instagram, 
It's going to be Instagram.com creep underscore geeks. No. Or, creep geeks altogether. That's funny because it shows differently on my... Why is it... What do you mean that's funny? I've spent all weekend doing this and this is the first time you're checking it and you're telling me that it's wrong. Hmm. Crazy. Okay. Let's look here. Okay. Here's what you got to try to show me. Prove me wrong. Okay. There you go. See. Use the underscore. Yep. Good job <laughs> for contributing exactly zero. I worked really hard all weekend, and this is the one thing you got <sighs> is to kill me with that. Uh, I worked so hard, guys. So hard. Well, I was doing just fine, and you had so. to correct me, which was not correct. Oh, so there you go. There we go. So follow. Oh. Follow. Would you <laughs> shut up? <laughs> I will roll that chair oh, off screen. Ooh, okay. man. You know what we need? Some, some levity, bro. Some levities. Stop touching me. Stop striking me. You're, you're angering the tiny chihuahua dog. Uh-huh. Pepper. Anyways, if you'd like to follow us on Instagram, it's going to be Instagram.com forward slash cheap under, or creep underscore geeks. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can follow me on Instagram. That's going to be the ordinary hiker, all one word. And uh, email info, like Greg mentioned, contact at creepgeeks.com. Yeah. Yes. Now, all music in this episode is licensed under the Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 license or the Creative Commons by Attribution 4.0 license. Yeah. We also put all links to the music as well as links to articles in the show notes for each podcast episode. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. So that's all I got. Okay. We do want some more. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we want. We want. What is uh, that? We would like more show suggestions and topic suggestions. Yes. Uh, you, thank you, Jay. Uh, Jay said good show. Thanks. We hope you turn, tune in again. And then uh, your buddy said, what did he say? <laughs> I thought it was going to be the Asian music. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, so um, if you guys would like to contribute more and be even more interactive, call us, leave a message for the podcast, or send us your suggestions on show ideas yeah. and topics. If you do want to call and leave a story, you can totally do that. The number is 575-208-4025. So if you have a, a story you want to share or a creepy experience you want to share and you want to be anonymous, yeah. then just say, don't use my name, but here it is. And you can call. <laughs> it's a voicemail. We're not going to answer it. You're like, oh, let me go ahead and leave this uncomfortable story. And then he calls like, hello, hello. <laughs> Doesn't he have to hang up, right? It's not like that. So you can totally call and leave a voicemail. You can send an email, that kind of thing. If you want to remain anonymous, you can certainly do that. But that's also part of what we're going to do. When we go and do our little travels here and there and make our little mini documentaries, if we come across people that have weird stories, especially locals, man, we're going to try to gather them so yeah. we can put them together and talk about them on the show as well. And we're also going to be adding new music and other things to come. So the goal is to make the podcast bigger than what it is because there's no reason why it couldn't or shouldn't be. And this is why it is what it is. So, yeah. 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 You can talk. <laughs> I mean, you, you have your I don't own know microphone. what else to say. So, Is there anything else that needs to be said? No. I think... Um, I think I would like some feedback about the name and how, you know, what people want to see from the show. Yeah. Uh, we well, do. can totally do it. And to go back to one of the original questions when the podcast first started, uh, merch, I'm working on it and he's working on it too. I've got some, some merchandise ideas and yeah. ways for you to promote. I'm totally going to buy this as a t-shirt. Yeah. So I like it. Yes. Look, it kind of matches this t-shirt. Which is, uh, I got it for his birthday. It's a uh, unicorn, a spaceship, and a Sasquatch. Yeah. On like an ocean Pacific type retro background. Yes. All of which are delicious. (laughs) Yes. But, um, and if you have merch ideas, let us know. Uh, One of the things we do want to do is reward those people who have been loyal to us, you know, uh, growing this podcast. We'll see what we can do about doing some more little giveaways and streamlining the process. So, yeah. Yes. All right. And that's about it. (laughs) Okie dokie, karaoke. All right. All right. So anyway, uh, thank you very much for tuning in to Cheap Geek Podcast. I'm sorry, Creep Geek Podcast. This has been episode number 90. 
Creep Geeks. That's plural C R E E P Geeks G E E K S. Creep Geeks. Dot com is a place where you can go and see stuff. But yeah, just to kind of recap, whatever you listen to us on, if you are listening to this podcast right now and you're like, they changed the name, that's because we didn't have to change a whole lot so that you still get the RSS feed and it still shows up. So there you go. You're welcome. So anyway, thanks very much for listening. Very much appreciate any questions, comments, concerns. Don't be afraid to reach out to us. Other than that, see you later. Take it easy. Bye-bye. Bye. I like peanut butter, I like peanut butter, peanut peanut butter, I like peanut butter. I like peanut butter, I like peanut butter, peanut peanut butter, I like peanut butter.